want to speak to you something very important and urgent in the season because God works in seasons. Uh, this subject has been spoken by many, many people over the years and right now we are in that season. That's what it makes exciting as well as urgent. I'm going to speak to you about the topic called revival prior to rapture. A revival prior to rapture. I firmly believe this is the precedence or this is the steps that God is, is taking. Uh, there's going to be rapture. We are going to be caught up in the midair and we are going to fly very soon. Prior to that, God is waiting to pour out a spirit in full measure on all flesh all the believers all over the world that's the season that we are in and that makes us so excited and close to catching away is there a precedence in the bible for this principles revival prior to rapture yes i'm going to bring to you one passage from the bible where this talks about one final tour before the final move for us, before the final move or catching away, there will be a final tour. What do I mean by that? Elijah about to be taken to heaven in a whirlwind and Elisha was following. That story we read in 2 Kings chapter 2. And you know the story, they are going from one place to the other. So they are going from Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, Jordan as a final tour probably to say goodbye to other prophet disciples before Elijah could be taken into heaven. So there's a final tour before the final move that Elisha is going to experience. That's where there is a precedence, there's a revival and then there's going to be rapture of the church. Number one, change. Elijah passing the baton to Elisha in that sense. Elijah is going to be taken away in a whirlwind to heaven and Elisha following and the mantle falls. This talks about the change. Change in generation. One generation finishing, the other generation is taking over. That's the meaning of that. There's a, it's time for change of God. We praise God for the older generation, the previous generation, generations of the past. But this is your time, this is our time that God is about to be uh, taking over. Even if you look for the old God, you may not find them. They have finished their race or finishing their race. So you, heaven is prepared, but are you or we prepared this generation? is prepared for the move of God, ready for the change of God? I'm not sure. Number two, continuation. On the way, Elijah continued to follow Elijah. Everywhere they went to, be it Gilgal, Bethel, Jordan, Jericho, wherever they went, the other prophets could recognize it is time for Elijah to go and they looked at Elisha do you know that your master is going to be taken away we need to continue on with our master just like Elisha continued with Elijah this is not the time for quitting quitters may not experience what God is about to pour out so this is the time to continue with your master, our Lord Jesus Christ, fellowshipping with him. Now you have gone through birth pain, you have gone through enough over the past, but this is not the time to quit or this is not the time to give up. That's what it makes very important. No quitting, quitters are not welcome, but those who are steadfast, patient, endurance to continue the journey with the Lord knowing that God is about to do something before rapture there will be revival before the lord took elijah in a whirlwind there was double portion of the spirit left behind on elisha as elisha asked about it number three crossings number one change change of god 
Number two, continuation, continuing of fellowship and following uh, as disciples of Jesus Christ, follow him, the master. Thirdly, crossing, verse 2, 4 and 6. Everywhere the prophets of the town looked at Elisha and told Elisha that your master is going to be taken away in a kind of uh, distracting him or hindering him or distancing him from his own master. But Elisha was not distracted by all these things or distanced himself from his master. He continued the journey. Every time Elijah was trying to distract Elisha, the master distracting Elisha, saying, stay here, God has sent me to such and such place. But still, Elisha followed Elijah, starting from Gilgal. Gilgal means rolling. You have to cross that season in your life where there's a rolling or a roller coaster, whatever you call it. Second, you have to go to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. You have to have a consistent time with God. That season must continue. Jericho means fence. You have to cross every fence, every hindrances that comes along your way. Jordan, Jordan means watering place. So each place means each thing. Each thing in our lives is each season that you need to cross over crossings in our lives. We can expand on it. Number four. Clarity, verse 3, verse 5, verse 9. One must have the clarity in order to uh, continue the journey. Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know. A firm surety, a clarity in Elisha's mind about what is about to take place. You and I need to understand the times that we live in. God is going to pour out a spirit. Are you clear in your mind what is about to happen? Just like Elisha was clear in his mind that he is going to experience something beyond his limitations, something beyond his life, something that he prayed about probably. Dr. Bill Bright, one of the books that he wrote probably 20 years ago that I read it several times, the title is The Coming Revival. He saw prophetically what is about to take place and he wrote that book. And many men of God prophesied about this season that we are in. So all these things put together coming in our times during this time of revival is God's Spirit working in our lives supernaturally manifold ways. That is what revival is all about and that will bring about results in the kingdom of God. So clarity in our mind about this revival. Number five, condition. Verse 10 talks about the condition when Elijah looked at Elisha and asked him, what do you want? Elisha replied, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah looked at Elisha and said, you have all the asked a difficult thing, but yet if you see me when I'm taking away from you, it will be yours. You must see me. Condition. For us, what that means, walking with God looking at him master steadfastly our eyes are full of focus on this god whom we serve the supernatural god who is going to exhibit the supernatural power in manifold ways all these things put together over the years in one moment that we should capture that and experience it how is my walk with my master where my eyes are fixed upon is it on him or on the things of this world or on your own self sometime. But he promised he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. So the next one, number six, capture. Elisha captured or picked up the cloak that is that of Elijah which was fallen on him as he went up. He saw, he captured that mantle. We are here to capture the manifold power and the move of the Spirit of God with all of our mind. We are at the brink of a breakthrough, a revival. 
we are about to experience mighty move of God which the world has ever ex never experienced before. We are the most blessed generation of all times put together. We will see the outpouring of the Spirit of God with our own eyes. We will see God doing amazing things in this world through you and I. That's the excitement. God has positioned you and I. God has placed you and I such a time as this, the season of revival has come. We will witness the unusual things that the prophets of the old even never seen before. We will see the churches being transformed, coming alive once again, flesh dying, sin nature subdued by the power of the Holy God. That's revival. Divine connections are about to happen. Divine destinies are about to be reached. Something amazing, heavenly, supernatural is going to, going to be natural. No efforts of man, but purely of God. This is what it is. We need to capture those moments, any moment, anywhere. It's already starting to happen. Finally, conquer. Once the revival comes, you about, go about conquering the world for Christ. That millions literally will be transformed and transported and translated into the kingdom of God. That's the time that we live in. This will not last forever. This may be the final move for a limited period of time. So, revival before rapture. So my friend, are you ready? This is the re-season of revival. Experience a revival and expect rapture. Experience revival, the move of the Spirit of God and expect rapture. You and I need to be ready any moment. Jesus is coming, coming for his pure bride. You and I, revival time, exciting time, subduing time, subduing every of your enemy, and then preaching the good news to the people yet to know it to accept Jesus Christ. There will be signs and wonders. There will be miracles beyond the human reasoning. Get ready, my friend. Let us pray together. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, prepare us, prepare the church all across the world for this final move of the Spirit of God, the final tour before the final move or the final move before the final tour, before we catch caught up together in the mid hair. So Father, I praise you for this season that we are in, that the generation talks, talked about. O oh, servants of God, prior to our generations talked about, but we are here to experience your move right away, straight away. Move among us, O oh, Father. Welcome, Holy God, to do your display, your mighty powers, our wonders uh, through each one of us. Thank you. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will see visions. Lord, we thank you on all flesh, even on your servants, that you are going to pour out your spirit in a marvelous way. We are positioning ourselves. We are ready to receive. We give you all the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friend.